morning. Today is Monday, February 12th. Can't find my regular camera stand, so I don't know how stable this one's gonna be. I can't seem to keep it at the angle I want it. So we'll see how it's gonna go. See this shirt? I love this shirt. I got it from Rose Gal. It's so cute. Um love doing rainbows. Oh I always forget something. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what do we want to talk about today? I have no idea because I had something written down and then as soon as I started my camera, like it's written down on my phone, I, my brain just went completely blank. <sighs> maybe, maybe I'll talk about birth stories. Kids. Let's see. So, got married pretty young. I was 19 when I got married. Uh, ow! I just hit my hand on the doorknob trying to catch something as it was falling off. This space I'm working in is incredibly small. <sighs> oh, well. Anyway. Okay, so I met my husband at a church camp. Um, we uh, were friends throughout high school, kind of like pen pals. And then we got engaged when I was in college. Um, I only did one year of college. I went to Bible school. I was going to be like a missionary or a pastor, but I, that ended up, like I, I talked about that in a previous video, I ended up kind of changing gears, finished my Bible degree, we got married, um, and we knew we wanted to have a big family and start having kids right away. So I found out that I was pregnant with my first on my birthday. I was so excited. It was like, I don't know, like four o'clock in the morning. I had gotten up to use the bathroom, took a test. It was positive. Called our parents. My mom was excited. His parents were mad. You're too young for that. Wait till you're 35, because that's what they did. And I'm like, we're married. Like, whatever. Um... First pregnancy, I had that uh, hypermyosis where I was like throwing up all the time. It was really bad. I lost, I lost weight in that pregnancy. Um, I was a little chubbier when I got married. You know, you, you know, in college, most college kids gain like 15 pounds the first year. Well, that was totally me. Um, and I lost all of that while I was pregnant because I was so sick I couldn't keep anything except, like, cereal down. <laughs> I quit the job I was at because it was too physically demanding. I had been working with special needs adults, but I, my doctor said that it was not super safe environment to be pregnant in. So I quit and I became a full-time nanny until the baby was born. And my husband had also been working with special in the special needs um, group homes, and he also quit for different reasons because the boss there was just really awful. <clears throat> so anyway, so um, we went, we moved in with his parents. I'm not sure why we thought that was a good idea. Um. But we, we moved in with his parents, and I got a job as a nanny, and he got a job working nights at a bar, like as a bouncer, and he was also working for the fire department. Um, it was sort of funny when um, the, the day that my son was born, he was born three weeks early, I was like... I had just finished the last day of my job because she was a teacher and school had just gotten out. So I was like, great, I have like three weeks to just like rest and wait for the baby. Nope, my water broke that morning. 
got up to use the bathroom. My water broke. And so I woke up my husband. And he's like, yeah, right. He was like half asleep. He's like, yeah, right. You probably just peed yourself. And I was like, no. So anyway, my in-laws had been just about ready to go on a trip that day. They were just about to leave. And I was like, uh, guys. And so they're like, oh, I guess we're not going anywhere. Because now the baby's coming. And... <clears throat> So, um, my husband's like walking around like in a panic and I'm like packing our bags and whatever, nice and calm. Labor hasn't even started yet. I just like, you know, got leaky waters like everywhere. Shove a towel in my pants and I'm like, okay, let's go. We get to the hospital and realize that we didn't even know where we were supposed to go. We actually showed up at the clinic first and they were closed because it was like too early and then we we eventually made our way over there uh anyway birth went really well it was my first one so you know obviously i was scared but everything went pretty well it was just one one thing that was weird it was that so this was a teaching hospital but you had the option to say no if you didn't want students in there so the doctor goes and asks me can these students watch he said, watch, okay? So I said, sure. You know, they need to learn, right? He didn't mean watch. He meant, can these students all examine your cervix? So here I was, you know, just barely 20 years old, did not know how to speak up for myself. And I had an epidural because I was terrified of the labor pain. And eight people examining me there and it was so awkward and embarrassing and I didn't know what to say my husband got mad at me because he's like you let them do this and I was like ah you know the freeze or flight or whatever response I totally froze I didn't know what to do anyway so that happened and so my oldest son was the first boy born into my husband's family in since since my husband had been born he because he was like the last boy so everybody was super excited for this baby boy um carrying on the family line and all that they were so excited they were so kind to me when I was pregnant I was like oh this is awesome this family's so awesome turns out they were only interested in the baby they were all there at the birth of my baby it was weird at first, I was like, oh, this is kind of sweet. The entire family, huge family, by the way, was outside of my room for the entire time that I was in labor. And they just kept coming in and out without warning. Um, most of them saw me completely naked, about to give birth. And I was like, can we stop this? Like, this is kind of private time, you know? But... Anyway, as soon as the baby was born, everybody in the hallway was just like celebrating and whatever. They came into the room. I The, the doctor set the baby on my chest. Um, I was so happy to have my firstborn baby. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, I created a human being. This is so cool. And I was just absolutely in love. Um, before I was even fully like stitched up, they came into the room and like took the baby off my chest and nobody gave him back to me for like an hour and at this point like I didn't even know like how to stand up for myself I didn't even know that I could tell them no um and so I'm like I need my baby and yeah I missed that golden hour where you're supposed to like breastfeed right away so then breastfeeding was always difficult with him I did eventually get him nursing but it was it was difficult because of that and um, so uh, as soon as the baby was born all the niceties were just like basically gone they were only interested in the baby then I, that was when I realized that his whole family just saw me as a means to an end and that was 
difficult. The, um, our second baby was also a boy. Uh, there wasn't the big fanfare. People did come to the hospital to see him after he was born. Um, my mother-in-law at the time was still sort of nice to me, so she was there. Um, by the time my third baby came along, also a boy, people had really lost interest. And, um, that one was weird, too, because when he was born, my mother-in-law was watching the two older ones who were, um, three years old and one year old. And it was basically like, oh, is the baby here? Oh, great. I'm going to drop your other kids off and leave them at the hospital. So my husband's sitting there sleeping in a chair and I had just given birth and I was trying to take care of two toddlers and a newborn at the hospital. It was not pleasant. Gosh, I have so many birth stories. Let's see. Um, cause, I mean, I gave birth to 10 out of my 11 kids. So I don't think I'm going to get to all the stories today because I'm almost, all, almost finished with my makeup already. It's only been 11 minutes, man. <clears throat> Let's see. How much one of these sparkly things do I want to use? I think I'm going to go with the... No. No, not that one. Go with the green. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um... Most of my births weren't really easy, actually. Um, I was really lucky that way. The hardest one was uh, my special needs boy, Tilk. What's up? What? Are you quacking? Quacking like a duck? Oh, hi, honey. Are you okay? You need the bathroom? Can you use the other one? Oh, okay. All right. Hang on. And we're back. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, um, so when Tilk was born, things were chaotic. He was born premature. Doctors didn't believe that I was actually in labor because, um, with the growth restriction, he was like really far down and the monitors could not pick up my contractions. They tried to make me leave the hospital and then my water broke and they had to readmit me after he was actually born. They had to do the paperwork again. It was, it was crazy. <clears throat> my easiest birth that went so fast was the next one. He, um, he was born in my car on the way to the hospital. Uh, my labor started at 3.30 in the morning and he was born at 4.30. Um, that wasn't, that one was wild. <laughs> Next one, um, was my daughter. That was a pretty easy birth. Um, then the one after her was, um, it was also pretty easy. But my, my water broke before labor started with that one. And had to be, I had to be induced. Um, so that one was more painful. So I wanted an epidural because it wasn't natural labor. It was a lot more painful. And the epidural only worked on one side of my body. So one side was completely like immobilized and the other side felt everything. It was miserable. Um, then the next one, my daughter, Naomi. When I was pregnant with her, they told me that she was missing most of her brain, and it was terrifying. Um, they said she was going to die. I was scared out of my mind. I was so depressed. My daughter then, who was four, she's like, nope, nope, nope. I prayed to Jesus for this sister, and God's going to give her a new brain. And she would climb up on my belly and pray every night. Oh, darn it. She would pray, and... One day, her prayers changed from asking God for a new brain for her baby sister to praising God for a new brain. We went back to the doctor, and what do you know? She was perfect. God had healed her. 
She's my miracle. When I came home from the hospital after she was born, I put Naomi on Taylor's lap. Taylor looks up at me and goes, Mom, I'm praying for twins next. A year later, I was pregnant with twins. The twins, they said, they said that I was going to have to have a C-section, and I was terrified of having surgery. And the day that they were born, um, twin A flipped head down. That's my, my girl. She flipped head down and I had been in so much pain the whole pregnancy because my body had grown so quickly with two babies in there that the labor pains did not feel like it was strong enough to be real labor to me. I was like, this can't be labor. So I had a regular appointment that day. Otherwise, they probably would have been born in the car too because I did not recognize that I was in labor. And I had a regular appointment, went in, and she's like, yeah, you're dilated at seven. It's go time. They said it was the easiest twin birth they had ever done there. Recovery from that one was rough, though. I had a really awesome midwife. The birth went really well. But the recovery, man, that was rough. <clears throat> and I said, I had, I had said to my husband when I was pregnant with the twins that I'm like, we're done. We're done. No more. And I was going to have my tubes tied. But the doctor kept pushing it off and not giving me the papers to sign. And at the end of it, I was like, hey, so are we doing this? And they're like, no, you're too young. And I was like, I have 10 kids. What do you mean I'm too young? They're like, well, you're only 35. Or I just, like 35 or 36. Either way, I just had my birthday a few months prior. And they're like, you're too young. It's against our policy. And I'm like, you're kidding me. So he had to get his done. But either way, I'm very grateful. Most of my births went really well. Most of them, everything was was good baby was healthy you know so I've been very blessed with that I think if I had had a lot of really difficult times I probably wouldn't have had so many <clears throat> I know I kind of did just a quick overview of most of them not really going in in depth most of them there wasn't really anything dramatic that happened I did learn to stand up for myself. I did uh, get to the point where I made it very clear that I only wanted my husband and my midwife there and the doctors and, you know, whatever. <clears throat> so, you know, in that respect, it got easier. But my family lived far away. And my husband's family was not helpful, like, at all. Their idea of helping after a baby was born literally was to come over, take the baby out of my arms, and tell me to go clean something. Eventually, I got to where I was like, you're not coming in my house at all until I'm recovered. And they weren't happy about it, but I was like, too bad, so sad. I had enough to deal with already. I wasn't going to put up with that anymore. So, um, I don't know, overall, overall, none of them were really terrible experiences, like giving birth and all. It was painful, but most of my kids came out in like one or two pushes, except for my special needs boy, because he was like stuck. And then, you know, twin B, Theo, he was upside down, so... We had to manually turn him after Ellie came out. The doctor wanted to like stick his arm all the way up there and grab him and get him out. And I'm like, mm -mm, let me do it. So he was up here in my ribs. I took my hands and I just like pushed him down. And the doctor was like, they're like, we've never seen a woman just do that. Like we usually have to do it for her. And I'm like, this baby's coming out and I'm not having surgery. It worked. My uterus was like too... After the first baby came out, couldn't contract well enough to push the second one out. So I sat there in my bed and I literally pushed him out 
using my hands, pushed him down and out so I could get him out without having to have surgery. Because they were, like, fully ready to cut me. And I was like, uh-uh. I'm like, I just gave birth, and now you want to do... Now you want to cut me open, too? Nope. And I kept making jokes, like, the whole time. You know, that, like, cheesy stuff that are, is on baby's skin when they're first born? One of the ladies is like, oh, you should... um." Because I, I was holding one of the babies and I got that stuff all over me. And she's like, it's like the best hand lotion ever. And I was like, hand lotion for my girl parts. This is awesome. And like, I was making everybody in the room laugh. It was, it was great. It was great. <clears throat> they made me have an epidural with the twins because they were like, I was like, I didn't want an epidural because with childbirth, for me, I had learned it was better for me to deal with the pain and then be able to get up and walk afterwards than it was to have the pain numbed and not be able to walk for several hours and being basically left to sit in everything before they would clean me up. And it was, I hated that. But the doctor was like, okay, well we can do this without an epidural. But if the, if baby B doesn't come down or we have to do an emergency C-section, we're going to have to knock you out. And I was like, yeah, I don't want that. And I said, so what happens if he doesn't come down? And the doctor goes like this, we're going to do that. And I was like, okay, epidural. <laughs> and they did, not to get the baby, but to shove my uterus back up inside me. They did have to, yeah. So I was kind of glad that I had the epidural at that point. Um, I did have it turned down enough so I could actually move my legs though. So, cause I was like, keep it, you know, so I can have some movement. But yeah, so those are, those are my birth stories. Um, maybe I'll go into detail more about some of them, but like, I think those, those are the, like the most dramatic moments. The one in the car was the best. It was scary. It was really scary. I do not recommend giving birth in your car on purpose, but it was, you know, it just happened. And my husband was on the phone with 911 and the lady on 911 was like freaking out and she's like, you gotta cut the cord, you gotta cut the cord. And we're like, no, 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 you don't cut the cord. You don't cut the cord until it stops pulsing, until it's white, your baby needs that blood. And this lady's just like freaking out. And then when the ambulance finally showed up, they were like, they were late to the party. I We had already delivered the baby. My husband caught him, put him on my chest. It was the middle of winter and we didn't have a blanket. So I shoved him up inside of my shirt. And so here I am, you know, like, spread eagle, just given birth, haven't evacuated the placenta yet. This young, very young cop comes up and he was the first one to the scene and he's like, uh, so I'm like, nice to meet you. <laughs> and I was, at this point, I felt great. I was like making jokes and I the, embarrassed the heck out of this poor kid. Well, I, I shouldn't say kid. He was probably like in early twenties. And the second cop comes up and he had a blanket and stuff so we were able to get warm and then the ambulance finally shows up and they're like let's put let's put mom on a stretcher and i was like no i get up carried my baby walked over to the ambulance and they're like okay oh my goodness it was funny it was honestly funny and i was just like laughing the whole time i was like this is the best story um we went to a small town. See, we live out in the middle of nowhere. So we went to a, a small town hospital right away to make sure we were stable. And they hadn't had a baby there in like a really, really long time. So they dug out all this equipment from like the 80s and they didn't know how to use it. It was, it was honestly funny. And so he was the famous car baby for a while. We didn't get on the news. I'm not sure why. Like, I guess I didn't really want to be on the news anyway, but nobody like asked if I wanted to be, but everybody in the area heard about it. And so he was born in somebody's driveway on the side of the road. And a month later, my husband was in the hospital with a, an infection. He got like a, a bladder infection that moved up through his body and he became toxic. He didn't tell me that he was sick until he's standing in the kitchen delirious from, um, what do they call it? sepsis yeah like he could have died it was terrifying and so we get him to the hospital 
and his roommate ends up being the lady that owned the house that we gave birth at. And like, it was just, it was crazy. It was crazy. But that, that one is definitely my favorite birth story to tell because it was just insane and everything turned out so good. And it, 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 he's, he's 13 now perfectly healthy everything turned out great it that one's just the wildest birth story i have the rest of them were just kind of run-of-the-mill you know good not bad there was a few things that happened that were like really not good mostly like nurses with bad attitudes or doctors that were like really insistent that things had to be their way and not my way and I was kind of like by that point I was like no we are doing it my way this is my body my baby I know what I'm doing so you know there was that I had to fight for a lot of like changes in the medical system um whereas like some doctors were like oh no we're gonna cut the cord right away and I'm like you're not touching it I didn't know that with my first two babies but by the I did a lot of research and you know figured out learned that the it's not okay to do certain things and I was like you're gonna give me my baby right away I'm gonna nurse the baby you're not gonna wash the baby I'm going to you're not gonna cut the cord until um until I'm ready for it you know that sort of thing um and they did actually me and some other moms forced the hospital to change the policies so that mom gets the golden hour with her baby. And that was entirely because I didn't get that with my first one. Um, I started really advocating and other moms did too. It wasn't just me. And so it was really great. We really like affected positive change and they actually like redid a lot of the way they, th they did things because of me and some other moms that was like, this is better for the baby and it was backed by you know medical science and everything and so the hospital policy did change so it was great so by the time my twins were born the hospital policy was completely different and i didn't have to fight for all these things that i wanted for my new baby um whereas you know when my first ones were born i had to fight for it because the policy the hospital was run differently but anyway thank you for joining me maybe we'll get into more of the birth stories in a future video but this one's getting kind of long anyway this is a look for today got these little butterflies have a good day